Hi everyone, let's dive today into brand new Dragon's Dogma 2. It's a very fun game if you're exploring every single cave and rock in this world with tons of different interesting mechanics. Some of them are quite controversial, honestly speaking. Say hi to monetization, optimization, really weird controls on PC and some other stuff we will talk about in this video. So I will give you 11 tips that can save you in Dragon's Dogma 2. Starting with saves. You have only one save slot in this game and it's overrides automatically. You can create only one character at a time. To start the game from the beginning you need to delete your current slot. It's a really weird decision from the developers who are talking about big open world RPG with exploring, tons of quests, some of them with different endings. So honestly I don't get such decision. Sometimes game can also save you in a weird situation, for example right in front of the boss that you are not prepared yet and you will be stuck in situation for quite a while, but there is a solution to this. In saves. Game saves your progress not only in automatic and manual way in menu, but also when you rest in inns and your own houses. We will talk about property a little bit later. And what's the most interesting, it's additional separate save slots, you can even see it in the main menu when you start the game. So if you are stuck in some situation like we've been talking about, go to the main menu, load your in save and you will be saved. To not lose many hours of your progress, make sure you are resting in inns or houses as often as possible. Now let's talk about property. Currently there are three houses in the game you can buy that are working as inns with personal bank and bed. To get the opportunity to buy your own house, you need to complete quest in Wernworth, capital of Vermont, in this mark. Don't sleep on this quest. Houses in this game helps a lot to save your progress. It's quite cheap house, opportunity to buy two more will be unlocked after you finish this quest, one in Vermont, second in Batal, but they are quite expensive. In Vermont, second house is situated on this mark, you need to talk with Salvatore NPC in this spot to buy the house, and I will show you the second mark of the third house, where you can buy the third house, it's in Batal, and uh, there you will need to talk with uh, Khajiit woman. Let's talk honestly, guys, it's Khajiit in this game, because Batal, honestly, it's elsewhere, it looks like elsewhere in Elder Scrolls the same way, especially if you are Elder Scrolls online player, you can see the same visuals, all the same. So you will need to talk with Khajiit woman uh, to buy a house on the spot I'm showing you, on the marks 2, 3 and 4 on my map, you can see houses where you can buy them. Another really strange decision of the developers, at least for me, in an open world RPG with lots of different exploration possibilities is the fact that you can't continue playing after credit roll. The only solution are either start new game plus or manually make a backup of your save. Save pass will be in the description of this video, so I highly recommend to make save backups as often as possible. Another thing you need to keep in mind is that pawns are not leveling up with you, except for the main pawn you have created at the beginning of the game. So don't forget to hire new pawns every several levels. It will ease your playthrough a lot. Next life saving tip, do not try to swim. A reason can't swim. Red tentacles will kill you no matter in which part uh, of the world you are trying to swim. Say hi to Hermios Mora. Also in this game, if you carry food for too long, it will become spoiled. Eating spoiled and rotten food will give you poisoned debuff. Another interesting system is fast travel. There are only several fast travel points in this world and you can place up to 10 additional your own fast travel points. But you are not traveling from one way shrine to another. You need to buy additional consumable that will travel you to chosen way shrine, but this consumable will be spent. Dying and getting debuffs reduces your stats, mainly HP. You get your health back, you need to rest and camp, in or in a house. And honestly speaking, I don't think it was a good idea to implement such mechanic into an open world, exploring single player RPG with a lot of quests and RPG elements. It's a good mechanic for souls like games or survival games to make you be more attentive, but in such game like Dragon's Dogma 2, 
As for me, it only shows you, only slows down your playthrough, annoying you with the additional need to spend your time in the inns instead of exploring. I really like different interactions in the inns, but the need to, the need to visit camps, inns and houses to restore max health level, as for me, it's a really bad game design. The same as it was in Witcher 3 with repair kits that even CD Projekt Red themselves agreed later after the release that it wasn't the best decision to make such mechanic in such type of the game and even added Grandmaster Repair Kits to make things a little bit better. That repairs every your item in a single use, instead of using several kits for one item. It's a good mechanic in MMORPGs like ESO to balance gold players have in their pockets, but not in a single player story-driven RPG game. Same for health penalty in Dragon's Dogma 2. Another very interesting mechanic is affinity system. There is a special tab where you can see what every character in the game likes. So it's not there just for fun, it's a part of a very complicated zip system. Affinity works in three steps. Doing quests related with this particular character, sending gifts to the character you like, and affinity. And in some cases with some characters like Ulrika and Wilhelmina, romance option. Characters with whom you have high affinity rank will send you gifts and make discounts in the store. Currently there are two characters whom you can romance, same way like Yennefer, Trees, uh, Shani, Keira and Sienna from Witcher 3. And some of their quests are missable, especially Ulrika's one, and some of them are time limited, so make sure you are doing them ASAP when you got them, if you want to romance either Ulrika or Wilhelmina. And also, if you want to know how to romance them, I, I created very detailed guides how to how you can romance either Wilhelmina or Ulrika. You can see them on my channel with a very detailed every step explained in the description of the of these videos so definitely check them if you want to know how to do this dragon's plague what is it when pawns are crossing rifts sometimes they can catch an illness called dragon's plague you can't see this debuff in status effects log you will understand that one of your pawns is ill when it starts behaving in a strange way and becomes more cruel and rude and will even wipe the whole city or village you are sleeping in at the fourth or fifth day of the illness. There are two ways to get rid of Dragon's Plague, either to get rid of the infected pawn or to infect other pawn. Your main pawn will lose Dragon's Plague debuff only after dying and being resummoned through the rift zone, or again through infecting other pawns in the party. But also there is a cheese. Game from time to time teaches you new mechanics, so tutorial tab about Dragon's Plague will appear first time only when you hire a pawn with illness, even if it doesn't have symptoms yet. Just get rid of this pawn immediately to avoid infecting your other pawns. And bonus tip, there is an establishment called Rose Chateau in Wernworth. And you're probably wondering how to get there. Answer is, do not rush, just do main storyline, you will get access during the main quest. And if you're wondering how to get platinum access to the third floor, after getting access, simply visit Rose Chateau multiple times and spend money, quite a lot of money, and soon enough you will get platinum access to the third floor. There are plenty of different interesting wonderful mechanics in Dragon's Dogma 2. It's a really fun game to play, one of the best RPG games of this year, but with quite serious technical and gameplay issues right now, like very bad optimization, one save slot and really weird decision to let players have only one character at a time and a very greedy, very greedy monetization system. It's not first time Capcom selling pay-to-win things in single-player games. You all remember, I guess, Red Orbs from Devil May Cry 5 and literally cheats for real money in Resident Evil 4 Remake. Still, it's an awesome game that I definitely suggest to all RPG fans with a great improvement since the first game, especially, especially in a story, but in a gameplay too. If you like this video, guys, do not forget to like and subscribe. If you want more videos like this, check different guides, builds and other endgame videos on the channel. And now I'll show you a little bonus clip how I was recording this video and freaking dragon attacked a city, disturbing me and annoying me from recording videos. So yeah, you will see how it was fun and how it was annoying. So I will see you in the next video. Good luck. Thank <laughs> you.
Fortune favours us, it would seem. 